felt like a performer. But that was like yeah. such a journey just to get to that place. You that know, point. really feeling like I owned my performance. Hello, it's Phoenix, and you are watching all the tea on Verse TV. I will be here all week. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share this. It's Phoenix, y'all. I'm young, but I wasn't born yesterday. Stay through the lies, I'm not surprised you think it's real sweet. real sweet. Till I pick up and don't pick up, I'm in these mean streets. Call it back to back, but not tonight, not having that. Doing me and that's a fact, I, I can, can show, show you how to act. Trying to stay intact, keep my cool, cause I'm not trying to black. Got these hoes comfortable, approaching me and talking smack. It's my fault, I admit it, why would I stay in it? What's up guys, it's your boy Troy with Music here, with the homos team. Of course, giving you all the tea with Verse TV. Here in the building today, we got, I have the honor of interviewing my girl, Phoenix. Phoenix Rock, yes, that's Phoenix, all those good, amazing things. She got a couple of things right here, but you know, she's the same old, same old, only Phoenix with two exes that I know. Feel me? So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Phoenix into the building. Welcome, Phoenix, my friend. Hey, girl. Hey, hey. hey. How's it going? Yes. Yes, Brooklyn. Brooklyn to the house, y'all. Um, and we just did our talk show, so she has a lot. She's on fire already. So I'm super excited to get into Phoenix now. Because there are a lot of people, you know, we've, I've done Phoenix interviews before. So there's certain things I know, certain things I don't know. But, you know, a lot has changed the last time I did interview Phoenix. Um, so I'm super excited about all the exciting things and things that have happened in your life. <laughs> First and foremost, being from BK, feel me? Do you, do you, have you always been musically inclined? Or you feel like, you know, <laughs> or you feel like, that's a part of growing up in the Brooklyn culture it became part of who you were. Like, oh, you felt like, yo, when I was young, I came out to Spain. What's up? Well, I mean, pretty much, I've always been influenced by music. I had a grandmother that listened to, like, all genres of music. So from growing up, I was listening to R&B, classic soul, and, you know, you have the church upbringing. But then I also grew up Catholic, so I have, like, influences of singing in classic, you know, classical music and singing in different languages and in Italian. So I think that influences me a bit differently, and it makes my story of, like, growing up in music as a woman of color a little bit different from most black girls that just traditionally grew up in, like, a Baptist or a Pentecostal. I grew up Roman Catholic, you know? So I had the influence of the gospel world, but, um, you know, I don't know many black girls that can say they sing the Kyrie, a lady song, you know, and, and sing in different languages. Um, and that just being a part of the, the, the culture, you know, of how I was growing up. It wasn't even anything that made me special. It just happened to be what my family chose as their religion. So um, just those little different things, I think, those nuances, I think could pick up in my music, even though I have a soulful way of doing things, um, that journey of having those different. And then I had an uncle who loved classical music as well. So... Um, I think that classical influence kind of makes my sound a little bit different from other people. Come on now, she's out here, y'all. She's out here doing the damn thing. She's been in the game for some time, making moves. You feel me? Take me back to your first perform, major performance when you first performed, like younger. And you was like, yeah, I know I, I like this. I'm gonna do this because you know, wanting to perform is one thing, and then getting on stage and actually performing is another thing. Um, so you know, some of us are great performers, but we have stage fright. You know, it's just what it is, you know. So how was it for I, I remember my first big performance where I was like, this is going to be it for me. This is what I'm doing for my life. Um, t- tell me about that one time for you, that one moment where you was like, this is it for me. Well, it, 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 honestly, in order to talk about that, I have to kind of take you through a journey because I never wanted to be an artist. I didn't want to be a performer. Um, I knew that I had the ability to sing, but my goal um, for 10 years was to be a songwriter. I wanted to place records on major artists and write for other artists. I wasn't, my goal wasn't to uh, be an artist. I didn't decide until around 2014 that this was something I had to take ownership of as far as applying my own music to my own artistry. Um, So getting on stage, I had severe stage fright, but I didn't think it was anything that I had to worry about because it wasn't something I was pursuing. Um, So... Honestly, me incorporating hosting into my repertoire was my way to get over stage fright. So I have a very, like, you know, you know, my, my horoscope is cancer, and cancers were crabs, and, like, even the way we deal with life sometimes is kind of, like, similar to how crabs move. So I kind of went around different hurdles to get to the point. So the combination of performing and um, hosting, I think, 
built my confidence as far as being able to stand in front of people. As far as a major performance, when I did Soul Village in 2017, I remember that. <laughs> I think for me, that's when I felt like a performer. But that was like such a journey just to get to that place. You know, point. Really feeling like I owned my performance and I was the artist Phoenix on stage, mm. not the same. With your yellow top and your nice short black hair. Come on, shout out to my cousin Kimbo Queen on Instagram. She makes that outfit for me. She makes she's a dancehall cool. artist, so it was a very like dancehall kind of outfit because that's her style. So right, right, yeah. right. Yes, it was super dope. Put the camera up a little bit so I can see your beautiful face. Um, and so, when it comes to the hosting now, when did that start for you? Because I know I met, so just to give a little background, I met Phoenix, I don't know, maybe like six years ago, okay, about mm -hmm. six, seven years ago. And um, I, I was at an open mic, and a friend of mine was like, oh, come on, say, you know, all this, you know, I know people doing all this shit. I'm like, yeah, I got you. And I walk in, I'm doing my thing, and I'm running to Phoenix, and we have a conversation we, we just you know started bobbing as creators and next thing you know um you know that was it you know we was like yeah let's work together one day and a couple of years later boom we both um, <laughs> we both, um hosting a show we both like applied to host for a show and i'm there you know standing there you know my first day like all right what about we about to get into and phoenix walks up i'm like look at that guy Right. Like some years ago, it was like, we're going to work together. And uh, we literally worked together. That was our first Chill Talk TV. Um, no, not Chill Talk TV. Sorry. Um, Street Judge TV. Sorry. We did a lot of things together. Street Judge TV <laughs> was our uh, first debut together as uh, working together um, in any aspect of creativity. And I think it was uh, super dope coming together. And um, finally, I, you know, saying we're going to do something and boom, it happens. And, you know? happens. and, and, and the rest is history. Um, so You know what's crazy that, about that, though? That show that we were doing was supposed to be rotating host. And after you and me got there, we met one other girl, shout out to Precise, and we was like, we like yes. this. And we remade the show our show. Remember, it was supposed to be rotating. It wasn't supposed okay. to be like permanent slots. It was supposed to be like, kind of like, All right. like doing it. After right. we got there, it, we, we permanently became the host of that show. We killed it the first day. Like, we're skinny. We out here. And um, that was amazing because I have always been hosting stuff, but that was my first time hosting, like, on camera. And that sense. And on the streets, so, um, like, we were walking up to strangers. We had to walk up to strangers and get engaged in it. Right. We had to play music for them and ask them what they thought. And first of all, just show uh, you guys not artists. New York. Not of artists. artists. Right. So we don't even know who they are. They so they don't food. even know who these people are. And we're trying to get you to stop in the street for five minutes to listen and give your critique. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, was, it, was lot, it was a lot. It was a lot. It was a lot. That was hard. Go get that person. Let's try to do this. Let's, it was it was a lot. Um, but it was it was so fun being in the street and being hands on with the community and, why, and the reactions we got from people and you know we, it stepped our game up. You saw us out here if you watch from the floor, you see us now, like we out here. Like and it we're gave us a game lot of, it gave me a lot of personally a lot of hope as an independent artist because you would think so many people would be like saying dollfish, but we actually got a lot of positive energy. We never I never had a negative like transaction right. with anybody. Everybody was open. They were actually giving real um opinions and making real pointers about the artists and about the music and they were listening and really engaged and right. it was like wow right. a lot of this is just really about marketing and promotion. Like these artists just don't have the money because people are willing to listen. If we can get you to stop in the street, that means mm -hmm. we'll be willing to listen to it on the radio if somebody played right. it. If I had to right. put it on the radio. You know, right. so it told me a lot about just like our stereotypes and what we assume when that's not even the case. Like people were definitely open minded and willing to listen. Um, I remember that when I did Outside the Box, that was a dope episode. Yes. I That's actually so played one of my own songs. She played her own song, right, her own music. And you know the secret, we didn't really tell anybody, and she actually got to interview people after playing her own song. So I think that, that was a lot of balls. <laughs> right. <laughs> a lot of balls. Because you're like, these people don't know me from Pinnacle they, they don't know that that's me. They don't know me from Pinnacle So they can say whatever the hell they want. So you got to sit there and deal with it. Like, that shit was... You got to sit there and deal with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you did it very well. And I think that was super dope that we could bring what we're doing to something that we're doing. Um, I thought that was pretty dope. So shout out to uh, She Just TV for giving us a chance of making it happen. You know, giving us that real. We all here now. And, and, and Joe Talk, which was the following I was getting there. 
Chill Talk TV was the next project we worked on together. I saw an ad for uh, like a VH, not VH, like an MTV TRL, BAB, T106 The Park style show. Um, and I was like, oh, we're looking for one host, but you know, we could do two of it. Oh, I got some. I will be doing this. I said, Phoenix, I'm going to email these people. They're going to make it happen. Boom. They hit us back, and before you know it, we were creating our own show because they weren't here. See, Street Jerks TV, they were they were there with us. They were on the street with us. They were making it happen. They were really with us. But Chill Talk, we had to make it happen ourselves. We, we had our own camera people, you know, and they helped us, you know, send us somebody to make it happen. Shout out to we Rob. Did. Shout out to Rob. Rob, Rob, the director Rob. He just held us down. He gave us some start to make moves, and, you know, he even helped us with our show, Chill Talk TV. So shout out to, you know, Chill Talk as well. So giving us a chance to make it happen. Um, we, I really enjoyed that video count. I was able to incorporate our own music right. and videos into it, too. You can find me on Instagram at yes, that's Phoenix, Y-E-S-T-H-A-T-S. Phoenix, P-H-O-E-N-I-X-X. Do not forget the second X is out of respect. My Twitter is Phoenix Rocks. My YouTube is Phoenix Rocks. My Facebook is Phoenix Rocks. I'm Phoenix Rocks everywhere but Instagram. Somebody hated it, but that's a whole nother story. Either way, check out my SoundCloud. That's Phoenix Rocks as well. I got a new song up there. Audio Mac, if you want Audio Mac, holler at me. I'm on all streaming platforms as well. I'm everywhere, y'all. For love of boo and aid at the table. Thank you, Troy, for having me. Thank you. All the tea, baby. I spilled it all here today. That's right, y'all. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Until next week, until next time, with the next interview, y'all. Keep it talking, y'all. We'll see you guys next week. You think it's a game, like? I'm young, but I wasn't born yesterday. Stay through the lies. I'm not surprised. You think it's real sweet. Till I pick up and don't pick up. I'm in these mean streets. Calling back to back, but not tonight. Not having that. Doing me, and that's a fact. I can show you how to act. Trying to stay intact. Keep my cool, cause I'm not trying to black. Got these hoes comfortable. Approaching me and talking smack. It's my fault. I admit it. Why would I stay in it? Love myself way too much to settle for the basic. That's crazy. I'm a gem uh-huh. and the master of the pen. You testing me and stressing me just cause you know you can. Distracting me from what's important. What the hell you smoking? Uh-huh. Trying to laugh it off, but you know I'm really joking. Uh-huh. Shit, I'm barely coping. Trying to hold it together.